Hero Film Corp presents Young Turks 40 Years. If I were to look once again at the data, and I have uh, numbers between Jan and June of 2015, and that pegs you at the third spot in terms of uh, uh, deals done at 20 along with Tiger. Yeah. Uh, it's a, the number of deals versus the quality of deals, what is driving you at this point in time? What's more important? Absolutely. If our investors were to read this data, they'll be very scared that are we deploying money indiscriminately. Hmm. But are you? Uh, I think we are a very measured investor. We have been actually investing across all cycles. But typically, we tend to invest in seven to eight companies in a year to the tune of about $50 million. Uh, and as they say, size is the enemy of the return. Mm. If you have a very large fund and you are deploying too much capital, you are likely to stray from your strategy. Mm. There's a lot of conversation or debate around the role of investors at this point in time. And I'll yes. ask you this in the context of one of the companies that you invested in, yes. housing. And we've yes. seen what's happened at housing. Yes. Uh, uh, and, you know, our former CEO uh, uh, and someone I respect, uh, Harish Chabla, said that there is need for adult supervision in this space at this point <laughs> in time. Uh, you know, have investors not done enough of that? And is, is there need to really go back to the drawing board in that sense and talk about what more you bring to the table beyond just money? One, if you are overly involved in the running of a company, then you are disempowering the entrepreneur. What is be, the judicious make? Yes, so it has to be very light touch, which means not being operationally involved. But working with the entrepreneurs in helping out, helping figure out key levers of the business. Mm. And to us, key levers are getting your business model right, uh, number one. Number two, building the organization for scale, which is getting all the uh, management. And then three, how to capitalize the companies. You know, not just your own portfolio, but as you look at this space today, you know, a lot of the stories that yeah. capture headlines. Yes. Uh, and, and then you suddenly see that, okay, it's, you know, now starting to go up in smoke. How much yeah. of that is on account of too much aggressive uh, sort of push by investors perhaps to chase growth targets, uh, to, to scale up too soon, too quickly. Uh, how much of that would you say is responsible, for instance, uh, you know, for, for a housing story to go off track? I think, as they say, it takes two to tango. So, investor can't do it by himself. And I will give you the rationale behind wh why what is happening is happening, which is that by and large, internet businesses are winner-take-it-all businesses. Mm. And there is also a correlation between first-mover advantage and winner-take-it-all. Right. So, if you are a first-mover, there is a case for growing very rapidly. Because you as a consumer, Shireen, once you have installed Big Baskets uh, app mm. to do your grocery, mm. which I am surprised to know you don't, uh, then there is a pretty good chance that you will stay with uh, big basket if I deliver to you a good experience. That's right. So, I think there is a case for get big fast quickly. Mm. Mm. Uh, that is what all investors are chasing. However, what is happening is that a lot of the companies don't have the management capacity to deliver on this growth in a very fundamental way. Mm. Fundamental way means that great customer experience. Mm and doing it in a financially responsible way. You know, I, I'm glad you talked about financially respons financial responsibility because yeah. this, this takes me back to an interview that I did many years ago with Jack Ma when he was here in India. Yes. And he said the reason why Alibaba succeeded is because they had very little money. Is the problem today in India and in the Indian startup ecosystem the fact that there is just too much money slushing around? I think India, <coughs> especially late stage investors are overcapitalizing lot of companies and the reason they are overcapitalizing those companies is because they are largely global investors and they are thinking of scale in terms of what they have experienced in United States and China. The reality is those economies are eight to nine times our, uh, size. Uh, our size. So, it's some time before we will reach that scale. And hence, we need that uh, that kind of capital. Do you now see 2016 as perhaps being the start of the rebalancing, if I could call Absolutely. it Absolutely. I think focus on fundamentals, 
some new investors who have uh, shown up on the indian horizon mm. getting to know more about what it takes to build a company in india mm. because in india investors because we were seeing plenty of that in fact uh, they they're driving a large part of the yes yes because today. india is always two step forward one step backward you know uh, speaking of reality uh, what do you really expect as far as the e-commerce uh, uh, scenario is concerned because while the the entrepreneurs themselves believe that hey this is another 5 6 7 years away they're now starting to talk about profitability a couple of yes. years down the line yes. whether that actually means uh, you know you gross margin <laughs> exactly is is a different story yeah. but at least they're starting to talk about that uh, do you do you really see a significant unfolding uh, or or you know a, a significant collapse within the e-commerce space as is being sort of feared at this point in time Uh, i won't say so and the reason i say that is if you look at entire market cap of india's digital economy is probably about 30 billion when i look at uh, us that number is 2 trillion and when i look at china it is 1 trillion and our number of people shopping online is about 50 million mm. in a population of a billion e-commerce as a percentage of retail is 1% so i feel that uh, there is correction but there is no collapse coming in and the story has just started mm. and our best estimate at helion is that over next 7 to 10 years india's digital economy should be between 700 billion to a trillion uh, as we hit 10% uh, penetration of uh, retail transportation and other parts of gdp so i think we are very very early and the people who have built scale have disproportionate advantage mm. over anybody who's going to come in uh, now so will these people collapse the answer is no have they gotten ahead of themselves in terms of valuation the answer is yes yes so what do you make of the indian unicorn club how real is it indian unicorn club uh, is doing a great job on growth and i think also on customer experience they have to do a much better job of building management mm. because right now it is too entrepreneurial driven and there is a very serious scheme and risk uh, and given how rich they are getting so quickly mm. uh, that scheme and risk can be even higher than what we think indian e-commerce probably i'm not sure consumes between 2 to 3 billion dollars to generate 10 billion dollars of gmv mm. uh, which means to finance that growth uh, we are taking in lot of money mm. uh, so i think that part needs to be uh, controlled that realization is set in and we need to build an organization culture around a great management team mm. on that note it is time for us to take a break but when we return we continue our conversation with sanjeev agarwal of helium stay right there hero film corp presents young turks 14 years 